one machine, even the fastest one, pulled over while it was being called, that ridiculed the defeated car as it was trying to follow its taillight. It disappeared into the darkness of the night. Then, the fast one was revealed to be Jinte, a name which was engraved all over the Shotoko. And to make a name for a new legend again, fame-hungry people will visit the Shotoko. Above all the people who nearly match Jinte's skills are 13 drivers known to be hostile and feared, also known as the 13 Devils. This is the Tokyo Metropolis Highway, the last paradise on Earth where a legend is born. Tokyo Extreme Race is Zero, boys. What a game. What an underrated series. More people need to know about this game. Listen, listen, listen up. We're going to talk about it. Uh, so... If you don't know, the Japanese version had cutscenes. We get stuff like that. Tokyo Stream Racer 3 actually had cutscenes. We got more. But Zero, we didn't get much. We kind of just got the intro and that was it. But look, we're going to talk about the game today, man. You see my subtle course of videos. You know about the Shotoko Revival Project and how insane that project is and how they keep working on it. I need to jump back in and play it. It's been quite some time. But look, the C1 loop. Bayshore line, Yokohama. It's a great place to race. But we're going to go over Tokyo Extreme Race Zero today. We're going to get into it. If you haven't heard of it, ooh, strap in. This is going to be a good one. So, Tokyo Extreme Race Zero, also known as Shotoko Battle Zero in Japan, is a racing game that was developed and published by Genki for the PlayStation 2 in 2001 first few games i think one and two were on the dreamcast and i think when they decided to can the dreamcast genki was like all right we gotta go to the ps2 the game is set in the shuto expressway a real life highway in tokyo japan you guys know it you've seen it you've seen it if you've seen ekoku you know legendary meetup spots bozozoku showing up cops always shutting it down all kinds of stuff man it's a legendary place. I would love to go to Japan. Okay. It's different now than it was back in the day, of course. The game features over 200 different cars to race with and against, which is still an impressive number, even to this day. The game's development process began in 2000, with Genki aiming to improve upon the gameplay and features of the previous game in the series, Tokyo Extreme Racer, which, like I said, was on the Dreamcast. One of the major changes made was the inclusion of a story mode where the player takes on the role of a new street racer trying to make a name for themselves in the competitive world of Shuto Expressway racing. If you guys have played or you know you get the bad name, it's just goofy random names that you get throughout the playthrough. It's uh, it's good. It's good stuff. This mode features a branching narrative with multiple endings depending on the player's performance and choices made throughout the game. If you beat all the wanders, you meet all the requirements, you race the, you know, the devil Z at the end. One of the key features of the game being the wanderer system, where players can challenge and race against AI controlled drivers known as wanderers, who are based on real life street racers. Now I did, I have looked into this cause I've heard that they did base like the 13 devils or the Zodiacs around some real life street racers. And I found names and I've tried to cross reference and really look into who these people were on. I haven't really been able to find anything. So we're just gonna leave that as is. Each Wanderer has unique characteristics such as their driving style and car setup and players can earn points by defeating them. I don't know if you call it points, you just get money. You know, but look, some of those Wanderers, if you know, if you've played, are a pain man like you have to do what was it like some are like only appear certain days of the week every other day every third day you got to beat another wanderer first you got to have played over 180 days and then use a certain car um it's freaking i think one was like certain time of the night so you'd have to go into your ps2 and change the internal clock what else did they have Day must be divisible by seven and have a certain license plate, have a million dollars, have a brand new car with low mileage, own 25 cars, have no muffler mods. Like basically, if you're not using a guide, you're gonna miss, you're just not gonna know. And I think if you do read some of the descriptions, which is one of the 
the, the best parts of the game for me. They put a backstory behind all of these racers. And I believe in Zero, was it in Zero or was it in Three? After you beat them and unlocks more, it might have been in, in port It might be all of them, but I think it unlocks more. Like it, it shows like a brief explanation and story and then you beat them and it unlocks more and you go back and you read it. And it's like, well, like they put a lot of time and effort into building a backstory. And a lot, of, I, I know a lot of people didn't go in and read those or like, oh, just play the game, be done with it. But like it, some of them are pretty funny. It's it's a it's a good read, man. If you see my playthroughs, you know that we do that. So on top of that, this was at the peak of like the Ricer era, you know, early 2000s. This game in the DVD extras had a trailer for the Fast and the Furious, which is just, it's pretty cool. And then on top of that, it had this street racing documentary uh, based around some real life street racers in Japan. And if you haven't seen it, it's on my channel. It's in my Tokyo Stream Races Zero playlist. I will link it in the description. It's really, really cool. And it's just like a throwback. It's like, God, that was what, 22 years ago now? Crazy. But look, in terms of gameplay, Tokyo Stream Racer Zero featured a more realistic and challenging racing experience than many other games in the genre. I mean, what other genre can you load in and be in an open world highway that's based off a real highway and flash your lights behind a racer and challenge them? And then once you challenge all the racers, the team leader comes out and they challenge you. And half the time, they're gonna blow past you. And if you don't block them, you're done. And then the bosses come out. If the, some of those 13 devils, Zodiacs get around you, it's game over. You gotta hope they crash. You gotta block them. This game was very difficult. And I remember being in ninth grade, I didn't even hear about it. And my buddy in shop class was like, hey man, you gotta get this game. And I was like, all right, cool. I had my parents take me. I think my dad took me to the mall, grabbed it. I played all weekend nonstop, man. Ugh. Good times. But look, cars, highly customizable. You could upgrade and tune everything. If you drove enough miles, you could swap the engine. You would, it would, it was like a trick. You could like rubber band your, uh, your joysticks together and, um, I like tape the trigger down or the X button or whatever and just drive. It would just leave it on all night and drive around. You could do an engine swap, transmissions, suspension, aerodynamics. You could really, really go in and tune the car and to really do some of the end game stuff where you needed really really crazy top end you had to mess with the gear ratios and as a kid i didn't really know how to do that and man it makes a difference so this game was really cool in that aspect like you actually had to have a little bit of tuning knowledge and and really tinker with the cars man so the game featured a wide variety of cars from Japanese manufacturers, Honda, Toyota, Nissan, European and American manufacturers, Ferrari, Porsche, and Ford as well. There was a good mix. I don't think Zero had actual licensed cars though. I think they kind of, the models are a little goofy and that's how they got away with it. But I think for the most part, they tried to keep the engine codes and stuff. So the Japanese release got more features than the English release. They had a full set of narration cutscenes for the transition between chapters of the quest mode. We just didn't get that over here in America. Um, and also I think there's, at least with Tokyo Stream Racer 3, there was a problem where there was a wander you needed a certain amount of money. And because they didn't change something with the yen to US dollar, I think unless you cheated or used cheats, you couldn't race a wanderer because it just wasn't possible. So that was the thing. Uh, the game further expanded on its number of rivals. 400. Keeping those from Tokyo Stream Racer 2, which was on the Dreamcast, while adding several new wanderers and two new teams. Now, two new teams doesn't really sound like much. I think three, it, that's my, it's my favorite just because it was so mad. They had three different zones and a ton of racers. Like, you get to the point where you're just like, man, is it ever gonna end? And then you beat some, you know, some hard racers and then more unlocked. You're like, holy, like they don't even list all the rivals at once. Like you finish like the first stage and it opens up more. Finish second stage, opens up even more. Like, holy shit. Much like Tokyo Stream Racer 2, Western versions of Tokyo Stream Racer 0 have rivals with Western real names. Although their real names are different from Tokyo Stream Racer 2, some of the translations of the Japanese rival days were mistranslated into English and I mean, they, it's weird because if you look at like the Japanese names and then look at what they translate them to, it's like, I, I don't know who came up with those, but it's like, all right, man. But the stickers, however, 
have the original names. And that's that's really all you look at is stickers. One of the major differences between Tokyo Stream Racer Zero and other racing games is its focus on realistic driving physics and its use of real life locations. Yeah, you could argue Gran Turismo did that, but look. This was a street racing game on a real highway. The game features accurate representations of the Shuto Expressway and its various exits and toll gates. Which is again, I don't, I've tried to cross reference. I've seen names. I can't really find them in real life. I don't know. I don't know if there's a Japan Google, you know. Each had their own unique driving style and car. Beating an emperor would earn the player their car and the right to race under their name. You can get their sticker unlocked. And I think depending on like the sticker you chose would kind of maybe influence what your bad name would be. Because I noticed like when I use different stickers, like I get different random names. I don't know. It could just be me. I don't really know how that system works. But yeah, the 13 devils, they come up behind you after you finish a team leader. Your heart starts racing. Like, oh shit, here we go. And if, you, like I said, if you don't block them, you don't, they don't hit traffic, they're gone and you will lose fast. Your SP gauge will go down. And um, that's another thing. Like, I, how can I forget about that? The SP gauge, you start a battle and the further you are, the faster that HP gauge goes down. Think of it like an RPG. Your HP goes zero, you're dead. You hit traffic, you hit a wall hard enough, take chunks out of your SP. And I, that was one of my favorite things because I loved RPGs growing up. And I was like, man, this game is like a car RPG. How can you go wrong? And I had a great, great car list, man. Some of the JDM classics that people are, really want these days are in this game. Well, long before Forza and all those, you know, this, this was the OG, man. Good luck. Tokyo Stream Racer Zero was a significant improvement over its predecessor on the Dreamcast. Set a new standard for realistic and challenging racing games. The inclusion of a story mode, team battles, highly customizable cars, diverse cast of bosses, and replays. The replays were awesome they had multiple camera angles this game had it all man it helped make it a stand out in the genre and this is why this is one of my favorites man you can't go wrong with this game if you've never played it do yourself a favor go play it if you want to know more about it we have full playthroughs on the channel i'll link the playlist down below check out that street racing documentary i will link that as well you guys know the drill subscribe come back and i'll see you on the next one